Uh huh. My bell. Is that eleven? Yeah. Good morning, students. It's a pleasure to meet you again on this platform this uh, Tuesday morning with our talk, with our course technical mechanics TMT 120. This is our third contact. Remember at the beginning I introduced mechanics. I talked about Newton's laws of motion, first law, second law, third law of motion. Those laws are actually the basis of uh, mechanics in engineering. Those three laws, they're actually the basis. And they, we also talk about the principles of mechanics, the four uh, uh, quantities that we deal in mechanics. That when we are talking about time, we are talking about space, and we are talking about uh, uh, time, space, force, and mass. Is it clear? So we also talk about it. Now, I, I believe by now there's no way that cannot define Newton's first law. That is also referred to as the law of inertia, Newton's second law, Newton's third law, all of motion. There's nobody, that can, there is nobody at this time that cannot define them. And also where they are applied in everyday life, in machines. That is mechanical machines in uh, civil structures, mechanical structures, buildings, masts, bridges, cars, engines, all sorts of things you see in nature that you see uh, produced. They, 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 are, they, are, they, are, they are the application of Newton's uh, laws of motion. New, and I also make it to know that it's not only Newton that started this uh, feed. He, 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 was, he, was, he also actually stood on the shoulders of other, other scientists, people like Copernicus, people like Aristotle, people like Galileo Galilei of Italy, among other scientists that started working on this uh, uh, course that is now referred to as engineering mechanics. Is it clear to you? So that was that for the first week. Now for the second week, which was last week, or I think this, yes, that was last week, the second contact, which was on Thursday, I introduced you to Newton's law of universal gravity. I also introduced you to what is called scalar and vector quantities, which I believe by now you all know the meaning of scalar quantities, you know the meaning of vector quantities, you know the meaning of, uh, and their units too, you know their units, I make it clear to you that last week, Thursday, that scalar quantities are quantities that has only magnitude. Quantities that have only magnitude are referred to as scalar quantities. Why quantities that have both magnitude and direction are vector quantities? I'm sure you're going to to share the material. Is it clear? So vector quantities are quantities that have both direction and magnitude. For example, force. For example, acceleration and uh, speed velocity, uh, ETC, uh, momentum, ETC are all vector quantities. Why scalar quantities that have only um, magnitude, that is size, are uh, mass, uh, length, that is distance, and time. Those are the basic uh, scalar quantity in SI units. That is that we talk about it. And I also define Newton's law of universal gravity for you. By way of recap, I told you that Newton's law of universal gravity states that any two particles of matter or any two bodies of matter attract each other with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart that is f equals g that g is a universal constant m1 m2 over r square that is uh, the formula for unit of gravity if you go to physics textbooks you will see there. So, but that led us to what I now, uh, before we ended our class last week, I now went ahead to teach you what is called contact forces and elastic forces. Elastic forces are actually contact, uh, contact forces too. So I told you that contact forces, we are talking about uh, friction, which, we are, which is our main topic for today. Then we have elastic forces, where you are talking about, uh, where I defined Hooke's law for you. I define Hooke's law, where I told you that Hooke's law state that if a spring is, is fixed at one end and a weight is applied to the spring, that the extension of the spring is directly proportional to the, uh, to the weight that is attached, which means if a small weight is attached, then the extension of the, of the spring will be small. If a large weight is attached, then the extension will be, will be appreciable, will be large. So when you apply a load of uh, 50 Newton, and you apply, or let me say, let me put it in kg, 50 kg and 100 kg weight or mass, when you apply it to a spring, the extension will not be the same. 
Is it clear? So that I told her about elasticity. I also define elasticity as the ability of a material to re return to its original position after distortion. And I now talk, talk about strain and stress. I talk about young modulus. Those things you can go to them in your uh, in your engineering books, in your physics textbooks. You will see that there in details. Now, I, at the beginning, I also I try to, to tell you what is mechanics. That mechanics is a branch of physics that describes and predicts the conditions of rest or motion of particles. So, for those of you that were not in my first class or in my second class that are just joining today. It will not be proper for you not to know what we are, what we are talking about when we are talking when we are when we are dealing with mechanics. Mechanics basically, principally, deal with objects at rest and objects in motion. Is it clear to you? So when a body is at rest, and when that body is in motion, then mechanics try to predict their behaviors. Is it clear to you? So that is uh, that. So it's the science of the motion of bodies. So when we are talking of the motion of bodies, it's not just man-made bodies. Bodies like the sun, the moon, the stars, that are always in the, the planets, planetary bodies that are always orbiting the sun in elliptical orbits, they are also they also they also cover the mechanics. Is it clear? So that is by way of a revision. For today, we continue with contact forces. Continue with contact forces. And I explained to you that last week that contact forces are forces that where two bodies interact, where they touch each other. That is contact forces. Now, I remember I made an example that when you are sitting on a chair, eh, your body is resting on the chair. Your body is contacting the chair, it's touching the chair. And when you are walking on a floor, on a third road, or on a slippery road, or in your city room, maybe on, the, on ties, there, there is a contact force between the floor and your shoes if you are wearing slippers or your your the the sole of your feet if you are not wearing slippers there's a contact force there most of the things in nature for example when you put your freezer on top of a wood is that is a contact force when you decide to put the freezer on the ordinary floor that is a there's a contact force between the freezer or the fridge and the floor or the wood that you have cut for it so when you put your television on top of a, a, a television stand that is a contact force. There is a contact force between the television and the and the stand. So those are exactly. And when you are holding a Bible writing, there is a contact force between your palm and the Bible. Those are examples of contact forces that that are that we can easily give to you. Now they are different from forces that are not in contact, like frictional force and sorry, like gravitational force, like magnetic force. The contact force is different from magnetic forces. And gravitational forces that you don't need to they don't you they don't need to come in contact with each other for the force to act that is that so i'm going to define frictional force i said friction okay i just define friction i define frictional force friction is the force that opposes motion that is the basic definition of friction i come again friction is the force that opposes motion the force that opposes motion is referred to as frictional force. I believe it's well understood. What that implies that when you are moving forward, for example, you are just while you are walking, you are trekking, then there is a force that is trying to pull you back. Is it clear to you? Now, this frictional force also acts on particles that are, that are in, in, that are in motion, maybe above the earth. For example, when a plane is traveling from one point to the other, or when a bird is flying in the sky, or when anything that goes up or that is moving, either is moving in the air. Remember that there's also uh, air is also a fluid. Water is a fluid. And that is what the to be our object of, of teaching next, is our next topic in our next class. Now, but today we are dealing with solid friction. Is it clear? So we are dealing with solid friction. I'm going to make those references to aircraft. And maybe bears, but those are those are uh, uh, what is called liquid friction, or what is called a, a, a resistance to movement in a in fluid. Is it clear? So that is also a friction. We're going to deal with that in our next topic. So when you are moving, whether a car is traveling on a third route or on an edge route, then there's a frictional force that is trying to minimize, trying to limit the motion of the car. 
The same thing happens on a train, in a train track. When the train is moving on the train track, then there's going to be frictional force that is going to try to limit the motion of that train, minimizing the, the speed. Is it clear? So that is a uh, friction uh, in a nutshell. So now I will talk about, I will define it in another way. Frictional force or forces, or for, let me just say frictional force refers to the force generated by two surfaces that contact and slide against each other. I'm going to come again. Frictional force refers to the force generated by two surfaces that contact and slide against each other. I believe it's clear to everybody. And I believe you put a writing. So when two bodies are in contact with each other, then the frictional force always come to play. What is the answer of this frictional force? The frictional force is there to resist the motion of those two bodies against each other. Is trying to resist the motion, trying to draw it back, trying to limit the force, trying to limit the speed by in which the two uh, objects slide against each other. Is it clear to you? So these forces are mainly affected by the surface texture and quality of force require requiring them together what am i talking about the frictional force depends on the surfaces in contact is the surface smooth or is it rough then frictional force is going to depend on that will be by texture well i'm also going to talk about that later when i say frictional force depends on surface texture um, what i mean by that is that if the surface is smooth or if the surface is rough now if the surface is smooth the force of friction is highly minimized is it clear that is why if you are working on on uh, let me say clay soil or a slippery ground now rainy is about is, is setting gradually now you see that when you are moving on clay soil or areas that are slippery you can easily fall compared to when you are moving on third road that is that is a uh, rough is it clear then that also brings us to another example that is very common. Now, you know, you know ties. When water is poured on ties or engineer is poured on ties, then you see that the, 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 you have to move gently on it because the frictional force is further reduced. Is it clear to you? Now, if you have seen ties before, there's nobody that has not seen ties before, you see that the surface of ties are very, are very smooth. Then when you get to the bedroom, for example, for, the, for engineers that know what they are doing, Construction engineers, civil engineers that know what they are doing. You you don't use smooth ties in the bedroom. I don't know whether you have ever asked yourself that question before. In your city room, in your balcony, in your in any other part of your house, you use very smooth ties. But when you get to the staircase and the bedroom, you see that they use rough ties. You have seen rough ties before. Those ties that have they are pointed. But not that they can they can pierce somebody's uh, uh, toes or or legs, but they are smooth. You have seen that before. So the reason that is the reason why they do that like that is that the ties in the bedroom and in the staircase should have more friction, should resist more movement, so that people will not easily slide and fall. Is it clear? So it's only uh, engineers that have, are not experienced that we come to that we do uh, bedroom ties smooth. Is it clear? Ties in the bedroom are supposed to be rough. Is it clear to you? They are supposed to be rough. They are, they are supposed to be stylish, as in triangular. You sure, there is no house. It's very rare for you to see a house where they will, they will construct the staircase and the bedroom with smooth ties. Is it clear to you? So I'm trying to explain the meaning of texture to you. That frictional force depends on friction, uh, on a texture of the surface in, in, uh, that in contact. Yes, then the angle and position of the object also affect the volume of frictional force. The angle and position of the object, that is how they are positioned. Are they positioned at, at, at angle 40? Are they at angle 35? Are they at angle 45? Are they at angle 60? Are they at angle 120 or 180? Or are they at, this, that is, all those ones affect the frictional force. Now we know that a straight line is 180 degrees. So when objects are lie down flat, 
the frictional force is different from when they are treated to an angle. Is it clear to you? I'm still going to talk about them when I'm giving you the factors that affect frictional force. I'm still going to give you. So now, the formula for friction is F, stylish F. The F is not normal F. It's stylish F equals mu, that is U. Stylish, you know the meaning of mu. You will be hearing of mu farad in physics. Equals mu times N. I come again. Formula for frictional force equals F. That is frictional force F equals mu N. That is mu times N. The mu is, you should know it in physics, is stylish uh, U eh? times N. Where F is the frictional force, that mu is the coefficient of friction and N is the normal force. They also call it normal angle in some places. So normal force. Is it clear? So take note of the formula for friction. The friction F equals mu times N. Where the F is the frictional force, the mu is the coefficient of friction, and N is the normal force. So that is uh, that for the formula for friction. Now, I'm going to, uh, because this course is, is technical mechanics, we are supposed to be talking, we are supposed to practicalize the bulk of the job that we're going to do is supposed to be practicalized. Is it clear to you? So that practicalization will take us to, will take us to trying to talk about mechanical advantage. Now, mechanical advantage, we know, which is MA, or, okay, let me come by saying, let me come by talking about efficiency. Now, we know that efficiency of a machine, efficiency of a machine equals mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100% over one. We know this one in, in, a, in a, we know this one in a physics right from time. Now the efficiency of a machine, we know that earlier machines, the efficiency were very small. Now we know that modern machines, the efficiency is almost 100%. Is it clear to you? Now compare the, uh, the locomotive engines. You know what's called locomotive engine? Those train, earlier train, trains, trains they were using 200 years ago, 150 years ago. They were called locomotive engines. Eh? Compare those trains to modern train. Eh? That is railway. I'm talking of railway now. I'm talking of a train. You see that those trains, they can move from Ibadan to Lagos for two or three days. But modern trains, you see that uh, from Ibadan to Lagos, maybe 15 minutes you are there. There are trains that are faster than aircraft now. Is it clear? Those are all products of mechanical advantage and velocity ratio and the uh, efficiency of a machine. Is it clear to you? So now, what I'm trying to explain to you is that friction affects the mechanical advantage of a machine, thereby affecting the efficiency of that machine. I don't know if it, it makes sense to you. If the mechanical advantage of a machine is affected, the efficiency will be affected. Because if mechanical advantage is high, then the efficiency will be high. Because efficiency depends on mechanical advantage and velocity ratio. Where, where the uh, if, where you know all these things, where velocity ratio depends on the number of tons. For example, in a police system, in a police system, if the police are five, then the velocity ratio are five. It's, it becomes five automatically. Is it clear to you? So that is that. So the mechanical advantage of machine is reduced by fission. I'm going to, I, I've explained this here enough now, but I'm going to, going to come again. For those of you that don't have, uh, that don't have experience in machines or that did not do their physics very well. I'm still going to explain this again. I said the mechanical advantage of machines. When I say machine, we are talking we are talking of cars, we are talking of engines, we are talking of bulldozers, we are talking of diggers, we are talking of any machine, whether the machine is whether it's a, a pepper, a, this machine that grants pepper or that grant the milli machine that milled rice. We are talking of things like uh, evil. Uh, things like uh, even machine that grants uh, or a melon, uh, all those kinds of small, small, simple, simple machines, and uh, their efficiency they are affected by friction. Is it clear? So long as they have, they have moving parts, any machine that has moving parts, then friction must come to play there. Is it clear to you? Because I told that friction is for that affects surfaces in contact. So if mechanical advantage is affected by friction, as I said earlier, then the efficiency of that machine will be affected. For example, the machine was configured to be 80% efficient. If the machine was configured to be 80% efficient, 
then fusion can reduce the efficiency of that machine to 65 percent or 60 percent is it clear to you that is uh, what i'm trying to explain to you now the efficiency of the machine is the, the how fast the machine delivers is it clear to you now what we mean by this is that the ratio of output to input is reduced is it clear when the efficiency of a machine is affected by friction it means that the ratio of output that is what you get from that machine and what you put into that machine is affected are you following just take your generator for example just take your generator for example if a generator is well serviced that is oiled the moving parts are cleaned and greased eh? you see that the efficiency of the generator increases the noise is going to reduce it's friction that causes noise in generators i believe you know it is frictional force that causes noise in generators when they say generator is making too much noise is the frictional force when the moving parts are touch each other at a very fast pace if that generator is serviced and oiled or let me say greased you grease it you see that the is going to reduce is going to reduce the frictional force we going to reduce the frictional force. Why is it initiative? Why is too bad. Yeah. So as I was explaining, sorry for the uh, break in transmission. I was trying to take a generator as a typical example. You can take other machines. Take your grinding machine, your milli machine. If the uh, if the uh, the the moving parts are greased. Grease is actually one way of reducing friction. If the moving parts are greased, you see that the efficiency of that machine will reduce and noise will reduce. Therefore, the input to that machine will be higher than the output because that is the essence of a machine. The essence of a machine, for those of you that did your that did the make this very well in your physics, is that input, a small input, leads to a larger output. Is it clear to you? You see, you, you see things like. Uh, you see things like uh, when when we are talking of things like uh, we I was talking about bulldozer just now. I was talking about digger. What do you think is the energy that the driver of the, all those things? What is the energy they put in? Just a finger, just a button that you pressed, and a lot of a lot of uh, output is gotten. Is it clear? Just, so that is an example of uh, when we are explaining mechanical advantage. That is a typical example of what we are trying to. When we refer you, yeah? yeah, okay, yeah. So that's what we are trying to explain. With uh, please go to the room, quick, 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 and I don't want to see you here again. No, I don't want to see you again. Madale, oh my, oh, push, uh, oh, madale. Yes. So that is that. So, for example, an automobile that is a car uses one fourth of its energy on limited friction. I believe I believe people are following. A car. I've used a generator, for example, but in the case of a car, this we have we have uh, we have a uh, life data to to describe it. Now, if you are using your car, for example, you are traveling from a, a one point part of Nigeria to the other, or you are crossing the border, an automobile uses one quarter of its energy. That is mechanical energy. You know, they are they are energy conversion. There are energy conversions in automobiles, many, many energy, but the major energy of, of automobiles is mechanical energy. That is, mechanical energy is kinetic energy and potential energy. Is it clear? Mechanical energy is divided into kinetic energy plus potential energy. That is mechanical energy. Is it clear to you? So, a lot of energy conversions take place. Yes, yeah, so an automobile uses one fourth of its energy on limited friction that is trying to limit friction reduce friction because if friction is not reduced then it will now take longer time even though the, uh, we, we are neglecting the condition of the road please take note that in this case the example i'm giving to you now we are neglecting the condition of the road we are not even talking about the condition of the road whether the road is smooth or the road is uh, rough so or let us assume an ideal condition of road maybe the road is normal is it clear it's not a road that is full of potholes where the car will be maneuvering and dodgy potholes, but normal smooth road. As though you are in Europe, eh? For example, where the roads are good. So 
an automobile is going to use one quarter of one fourth, that is one quarter of its energy on limited friction. Is it clear? Now, you will now be thinking, if, if you reason very fast now, your thought will now be that friction is, is disadvantageous to automobiles 100%. That's what you are going to think about. Is it clear to you? You will now say, okay, if an automobile, that is a car, uses one fourth of its energy in trying to limit friction, then friction is disadvantageous 100% to automobile. This is not correct. Apart from the fact that an automobile uses one fourth of its energy to in limiting friction, eh? without friction, automobiles themselves cannot move. Is it clear to you? Without the frictional force between the tires of a car and the third road, then automobiles cannot move. So you can see the contradictions there. We can call it, yes, we can call it contradictions. But what we are saying is that frictional force has both advantage and disadvantage to an automobile as a, as a case study. I believe that is well understood. So an automobile uses one fourth of its energy on limited friction, yet it is the friction on the tire that allows the car to stay on the road. Is that, is that part, point got here? I believe I've explained it, I'm just reading it now. Yet it is frictional force on the tire that allows the car to stay on the road and friction on the clutch that makes it possible to drive. Is it clear to you? Most of you will have seen the clutch of a car. We have seen the, we have seen the clutch of a car. <laughs> that the clutch of a car, if you have seen it before, maybe you have gone to a mechanical workshop and you have seen the clutch of a car, you will see that the clutch of a car is, the, is, is made up of different, different jazz system. Is it clear to you? Jazz system that are touching each other. So you have the driver and the driven in a jazz system of a car. You have the driver, you have the driven. Just like, like where you have a, a, in a in the transformer, for example, where you have the, the primary coil and the secondary coil. That is what you have in a, in a jazz system. So the driver and the driven are always coming in contact with each other. They touch each other. Is it clear to you? So it is that it is the clutch of a car acting on a frictional force acting on it that allow you to be able to to apply your brakes when you are driving a car if there was no frictional floor force in the clutch of a car then when you start driving for example you can't you can't apply your brakes when when there is when there is need for you to apply your brakes maybe at the road junction or when you are getting to a traffic light or maybe security office uh, for, uh, of, uh, agencies are stopping you for checks is it clear to you so that is uh, that yeah so now friction is one of the most significant phenomena in the physical world. Is it clear to you? Friction, write down this point. Friction or frictional force. When we say friction, we say frictional force, we are talking about the same thing. Friction is one of the most significant phenomena in the physical world. Please write it down. It's very this point is very important. And I can give it to you as an as a I can give it to you as a assignment after this class. So take note of it. Yes. So I said friction is, is regarded or is, is taken as one of the most significant phenomenon in the physical world. I mean, you, you got it right. So why is friction referred to as one of the most significant a factors or phenomenon in the physical world. The reason is that one, you cannot live where you are sitting now, where you are taking your class now. You cannot live. I assume you are in your living room now, or you are in your bedroom, or you are in your you are in your balcony, or or you anywhere you are. You cannot leave that place to the next place without friction. That way, that that alone will tell you how important friction is in the physical world. If you are if, if you are sitting on a chair now, you are sitting on a chair and taking this class, this online class, then it's free sure that make you enable you to be able to sit on that chair. Then if, after this your class now in the next 30 minutes, if you want to move from that place to your bedroom, maybe or to your kitchen, to or you want to go and take your bath, maybe you are true, you want to take without frictional force, then you cannot move from that chair you are sitting on, even though you stand up. You cannot move from that place because the frictional force between the between the sole of your feet. And the slabs or the ties or 
the plastering or whatever in your city room or wherever that was going to enable you to move is it clear to you so that is one reason why they, why they say friction is one of the most significant factors or phenomenon in the physical world now you know other reasons for example i'll give you an example of a car without frictional force cars will be useless one the frictional force that allows your car to be able to apply the brakes in the clutch of a car apart from that the frictional force between the tires of your car and the third road or the earth road now if you look at the tires of your car and eh, you will see that they are always calibrated is it clear to you they are not smooth the, they are not smooth the tires of your car if you look at the tires of your car the tires of tricycles bicycles motorbikes you see that the tires of those cars are not smooth you see the way they are calibrated in such a way that it is to make sure that the frictional force it is increased so that accident will not be rampant so that when brakes are applied the car will not skid to another place to or to the uh, to the other direction that is that now apart from these two examples i'll give it to you i'll give you an example of movement physical movement of people i've also talked about uh, cars all the edges all the machines you have in nature that you that have ever been produced they re rely on the principles of friction is it clear now for example you put a table your table your city uh, your dining table you put it down in your city room it is standing there because of frictional force if there was no frictional force it can't stand it's going to roll away and scatter the chairs your your your, your chairs in your city room your bed everything it relies on friction is it clear to you and, I've, and as you go further you will know that that is our next topic our next topic what we're dealing with uh, a liquid uh, fr uh, uh, friction in fluid you will see that without frictional force aircraft cannot move even in the sky that birds cannot fly even in the sky that evil trains cannot move e uh, even in their, in, their, in, their, in their tracks so that's why they said frictional force for example has revolutionized the aviation industry have revolutionized the industrial setting or industrial production because all machines that are used in production in the factories rely on frictional force for their production is it clear then what about power generation you are hearing of uh, kaiji down where they use hydropower generation frictional forces in, in action there then you are talking about which other industry is it exports a footballer cannot play there won't be football if there was no frictional force you see the boot of footballers the down of the, of the boot you see the way uh, they design it so that the frictional force will be there will be good frictional force between the, the the sole of the boots and the feet you see it so not even entertainment industry whatever industry you can relate it with without uh, without frictional force then that industry cannot exist so for that reason my students frictional force is one of the most significant or is one of the most important phenomenon in the physical world take note of that point very very important point and i'm going to give it to you as an assignment later now we leave that aspect of friction and go to the factors affecting frictional force factors affecting frictional force what are those factors i've explained some of them before i took time to explain some of them before one of the factors that affect friction is the area of the surface in contact that is what is called the surface texture surface texture affects frictional force what do we mean by surface texture is the surface rough is the surface smooth then it's going to affect friction now for everyday movement i've said it before that the surface must be rough the surface must be rough for you to be able to move now i've told you that on a rainy day on a rainy day for example if you are trekking or you are taking a walk you are more careful than maybe on a normal day i believe you, you all know this you have experienced this even vehicles on a third road when it rains they are always advised to minimize their speed is it clear to you I'm just trying to explain to you what we mean by surface texture in relation to frictional force. So smooth surfaces are experienced less frictional force than rough surfaces. That is why on ties, maybe ties are raining now. In almost every house now, they use ties.
when you are working on ties and when you are working on German floor, you know what's called German floor? And they say, and people are working on it. Eh? German floor and ties. Are they, do they have the same frictional force? No. There is more frictional force in German uh, floor. That one they draw German floor than ties. So you can run, children can even play on German floor. They can run, they can ride their bicycles. Even though they pour water on German floor, the frictional force is hardly reduced. But go and pour water on ties. Go and pour water on ties. And if you are an adult, unknowingly to you, just step on it. Not even run, just step on it. You will see what is going to happen. So frictional force is dependent on surface texture. That is number one. Now we go to number two. That is, we are dealing with factors affecting frictional forces. Number two, a factor that affects friction. Hello, Mr. Shego. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying, sorry for the distraction. I was trying to explain to you I was trying to explain to you the number, the number two point of the factors that affect frictional force.
please um your lecture soon please just hold on Engineer Joshua, please unmute yourself and start your lecture and continue your lecture. Sorry, you only have six okay. minutes more. Yes, yes. So, as I was saying, I said if an object is placed, that there is no battery factor that affects frictional force. If an object is placed flat against the surface, then the frictional force will be, uh, will be equal to the weight of the object. That is, you place an object on, on a surface, like you place a, a notebook or a textbook or a kettle on a table. That is what we mean by this number three. Then, number four. If an object is pushed against the surface, frictional force will increase and become more than the weight of the object. I come again, number four part of the affect frictional force. If an object is pushed against the surface, frictional force will increase and become more than the weight of the object. Is it clear because of the push? Yes, that is that. We're almost coming to a conclusion now. Then I quickly talk about normal force because we have six minutes to go. I quickly talk about normal force. Please write down this is a subtopic normal force that is capital n i define normal force normal force is the force is the support force normal force is the support force exerted upon an object that is in contact with another stable object is it clear to you now i was making example with uh, with placing an object on the table just now i was making an example with placing an object on the table eh? Now, when you place an object on the table, that object is going to exert a force on top of the table. Is it clear? So normal force is the support force exerted upon an object that is in contact with another stable object. So the table is going to exert a force on the, on the object you place on it. Is it clear to you? So now the formula for normal force is N equals mg. Please write down, very, very important. The formula for normal force is n equals mg where n is the normal force m is the mass of the object that is placed on the surface and g 
is the acceleration due to gravity. You know that even when you place an object on the table like this, the object is subject to gravity because it is elevated. Is it clear to you? That is the formula for normal force. Then if the object is inclined to an angle, that is the object is tilted. You can place an object on the table in a tilted form. That instead of the object to be to be flat, you tilt it to ago 30 or ago 45 or ago 60. So if the object is tilted, the formula for normal force is going to be mg cos theta. Please note, take note of the difference. If the object is placed normally, then the normal force is m equals to mg, mass times acceleration due to gravity. But if the object is tilted to an angle, the normal force is mg times cos theta. Is it clear to you? Now, the only technical point I need to add to you in this uh, uh, angle, uh, incline, when the, the object is inclined, is that normal force is reduced when uh, an object is inclined to an angle. So when you place an object normally on top of a table, and when you tilt it to an angle, the frictional force are different. Is it clear? So that is that. So you take down this calculation before I give you your assignment for today, because we still have three minutes. Now, write down, calculate the normal force of a body placed on a table. Calculate the normal force of a body that is placed on a table of mass 2 kg. That is the mass of the body is 2 kg. Of mass 2 kg. Eh? Calculate the normal force of a body of mass 2 kg resting on a surface. I come again. Calculate the normal force of a body of mass 2 kg resting on a surface. Eh? Take Take g, take acceleration due to gravity as 10 meter per second square. Now, since your body is not tilted to any angle, then n equals mg. So you say 2 kg times 10. No, talk, no, take, yes, you can take it as 10, uh, acceleration to 10. You can also take it as 9.8. So if you take it as 10 meter per second, it's going to be 20 newton. So the normal force is 20 newton. But mind you, you can so, so I can also tell you to take acceleration due to gravity as 9.8 meter per second square. In that case, it's going to be 19.6 newton. So uh, that is a calculation for normal force. So by way of uh, for those that did not get it correctly, I said calculate the normal force of a body of mass 2 kg resting on a surface. I now said in brackets, say g that is small letter g equals 9.8 meter per second square or you can take it as 10 point, uh, 10 meter per second square is the same thing as the of gravity is approximately to 10 meter per second square but normally it is 9.8 meter per second square so when you now say n equals mg it's going to be 2 kg times 9.8 meter per second square which is 19.6 newton so that is going to be the normal force if you take the as the of gravity to be 10 meter per second square then the normal force is going to be 20 newton is it clear to you that is uh, that about that uh, calculation. So by way of uh, revision, I have told you, I see how many things to teach you, but we are going to, when we come in our next class on Thursday, by the grace of God, we talk about uh, friction in fluid. Is it clear? That is fluid in motion and at rest, or fluid at rest and fluid in motion. It's still part of frictional force, but it's not friction, it's not solid friction. Is it clear to you? So please quickly take down your assignment for today because our time is almost up. Now, I now take down the assignment. Friction, the assignment is goes does. I'm giving you only one assignment. Friction is one please of the most up. significant. Yes, I'm giving the assignment now. Joshua, please time up. Yeah, let me quickly give the assignment. Friction is one of the most significant phenomenon in the physical world. Explain. Time. Yes, I come again. The assignment for today: friction is one of the most friction is one of the is is one of the most significant phenomenon in the physical world. Explain. That is the assignment. Please take down the assignment. I said why friction is is one of the most significant phenomenon in the physical world. Explain. So that is the assignment. Please do uh, write do the assignment, work it out, and submit. And I also explain some of the answers to you in the course of this lecture. I was able to express all the answers to you. So thank you very much for listening. And we'll meet again on this platform on Thursday uh, by one. Thank you very much.
to us. Yes. So since we are, we, are, we are still on, I said friction is one of the most significant phenomenon in the physical world. Explain. That is the assignment for those that did not get it correctly. And I've explained to you the uses of friction. I told you that friction is used in our everyday movement, in automobiles, in engines, in sports, in every area of life, friction is used. Friction also has disadvantages, which I, if the sitter can give to you, is it clear to you friction leads to wear and tear of surfaces in contact? Is it clear to you friction also resists movement of, uh, of, uh, of, of aircraft? Is, is it clear to you? It's also affect the, the movement, uh, the reduces, limit the movement of vehicles on the roads, among mm -hmm. other uh, disadvantages of uh, friction. So thank you very much. Uh, when we come back next time, we are going to, I'm going to start by revise what we did today before we go to friction in, a, in fluid. That is fluid at rest and in motion. Thank you and God bless. What is friction? Wait there. I said wait there, go back. I'm going to teach. I